Hi, I'm Eric Petzinger, owner of Epica, an antiques and 20th century furniture gallery here in San Francisco, California. And welcome to our December What's In at Epica, which features our new items to the gallery. Uh, several years ago when I had a great dame, wonderful dog named Salem, I used to take her to, for walks at the park, Alta Plaza Park here in San Francisco, and every Sunday, we were always amazed, they would have Pug Sunday and the Pugs would be everywhere. Of course, having a great Dane, uh, really, we sort of stood out in the crowd. But it was a great sight to behold, actually, and quite fun to be there. Um, so today we're going to be talking about, uh, really, the, the pub dog, a little bit of history, and then how this pertains, really, to us here at Epica. Um, the, the history of the, the pub goes back to 400 BC in Tibet, where the monasteries would uh, breed these for, uh, as companions. A in the Netherlands, in the 16th century, the uh, House of Orange made them the official dog because, as rumor has it, and history has it, the William, the Prince of Orange, was alerted by one of the pug dogs of the arriving Spaniards. In the 18th century, 1790 or so, the popularity had spread to France where Josephine, the wife of Napoleon, depended on her pug dog to actually get messages to Napoleon um, while she was incarcerated in the local prison. In, in the 18th century, 1745, William Hogarth did a, a great self-portrait with his favorite pug named Trump. Yes, Trump as in, in Donald. And you can actually see this uh, great portrait at the uh, Tate Gallery in, in London. In the 19th century, the breed really flourished under the monarchy of Queen Victoria. In fact, she so loved the dogs that she would breed them and had such dog names as Olga and Pedro and Minka, uh, Fatma and even Venus was one of her favorite dogs. Um, this helped actually establish the Kennel Club of England which was formed in 1873. We're really pleased to actually uh, offer a pair of hand-carved white Carrera marble pug dogs that are, were carved in England in the early part of the 19th century, which ties into the popularity of the breed in the 19th century of England. These two particular dogs were carved at the same studio, but probably by different uh, artisans. There are slight differentiations in how they appear, uh, which, like with Venetian glass, each piece of glass is, is different. And that's what you really want to see, not something that has been manufactured, but has been hand carved. And these dogs have a great weathered appearance. They probably sat outside someone's estate in London or in the countryside of England where they sat for years and have a great weathered patina. So if you think of the uh, food dog in China, these were sort of similar in that they would have flanked the, the doorway. They are hand carved with the uh, hand chiseling, which is exactly what you want to see. Uh, they have great nuance and expression. The, the, Pug dog of the 18th, 19th century, as you can see with these dogs, they were a taller breed than the one you see today and had more of a pronounced nose as well. I really hope everyone's had a great Thanksgiving and I really want to thank you for joining us this month for our What's In It Epica. If you can come into the gallery and see these pugs uh, in person, we'd love to see you. Otherwise, our inventory is online at epicasf.com. And we sincerely hope that you can join us for our holiday walkabout uh, this month in December. Thanks again, and hope to see you soon.